way through the darkness Guided by a beating heart I can't tell where this journey will end But I know where it starts They tell me I'm too young to understand They say I'm caught up in a dream Well life will pass me by if I don't open up my eyes But that's fine by me well, Wake me up when it's all over When I'm wiser and I'm older All this time I was finding myself And I, I didn't know I was lost well, Wake me up when it's all over When I'm wiser and I'm older All this time I was finding myself And I, I didn't know I was lost Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Wake Me Up by Avisi. I think it's pronounced Avisi. To be honest, I'm not 100% certain, but it's a fantastic song. I really love kind of cross-genre blends of stuff, and this is kind of a really interesting mixture of kind of like a house a house groove, a big house rhythms, but with this kind of folky guitar part, and I think that's kind of cool. So uh, to play along with the original recording, you need a capo on at the second fret, capo, capo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, chord progression is relatively simple, but there's some really kind of interesting ways of playing these grips that I think kind of work really well. Strumming's pretty full on in this song and, and, and pretty relentless, but uh, because of the kind of mixture between the kind of folky style and the, and the house thing, it gives you a chance to kind of mix it up a little bit. So I don't recommend necessarily starting off full ball like I was just doing there because you kind of got nowhere to go so I'll talk a little bit more about uh, simplifying the strumming in a sec but uh, first of all let's check out what the chords are so so let's have a look at how to play these chords then so the A minor is just a regular kind of old A minor grip now the next chord you could go to a big bar chord F but it's pretty difficult especially at the tempo of this song so it's a kind of a nice F which is an F major 7 over C is put kind of the, the proper name for it, which is this. Now, I'm not playing the thicker string. You could, if you were, wanted to be really clever, reach over with the thumb and play the thicker string, but really my thumb's just sitting there and muting that string, to be honest. But the actual chord shape itself is the rest of the rest of the strings, just not the thicker string. So it's third finger, third fret of the fifth string. That's three frets above the capo, which is not the second fret, in case you didn't notice. Uh, little finger down on the third fret of the fourth string. Second finger, second fret, third string. First finger stays where it was for the A minor and you continue to play the thinner string open. Okay, so A minor to this F major seven over C is the correct name, but you can just call it F. Now, if you move all of the fingers down a string except for the first finger, you end up with this other nice chord, which is a C with a G bass. Okay, there's your regular C chord, but we've got a G bass note on it. Okay, so A minor. F major 7 over C, if you want to do this little version, then C with a G bass. Now you quite often get a, a G chord and it's just for one beat. To get to that G chord, really little finger should move down there. Um, I'm just leaving the third finger where it was for the uh, C with a G bass, moving little finger down, lifting the other two fingers off. Okay, third finger will mute naturally the fifth string, then you've got three open strings and little finger. But again, even getting little finger down there for that one beat can be tricky. And what you'll probably find is if you don't have that finger on, your hand will probably mute that string anyway. The underneath of your third finger will probably touch that thinner string anyway and mute it. So that's a little cheap for you that uh, I was definitely, uh, that was happening sometimes for me. I wasn't getting little finger down in time there. It's quite a fast tune this one. Um, and the second part of the intro, A minor, F, again, I'd be playing F major seven uh, over C, C with a G bass, and then a E chord, okay? And that's the chord sequence that gets used for the chorus. But what's really important to understand is where that G chord just comes on beat four. So we have this A minor, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's just that one beat on the E and the regular G chord is just one beat. So I'll count that for you again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's
that's the intro sequence which is also used for the chorus now, the other sequence that we've got is slightly simpler which is for the verses which is just the a minor for two the f for two and the c with a g bass with a g, c with a g bass for four three four one two 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 three four so before you go anywhere near to start to apply a difficult strumming pattern, you definitely want to get playing this along with the original recording just nice and slow, probably by yourself even slower than the original recording first of all, and then get used to doing the chord changes and get the really simple strumming, making sure you get that chord change on beat 4 for the G and the E. Um, the verses are fairly straightforward, although the lines uh, 3 and 4 of verse 2, the last two lines before the chorus, uh, the phrasing of it is a little bit awkward, so if you're planning on singing it and playing it at the same time, you definitely want to spend quite a lot of time making sure that your rhythm is well sorted out before you attempt to sing it. it. It took me quite a few goes to be even to be able to, you know, stumble my way through it uh, without causing myself to fall out of time, you know. So um, let me just have a little playthrough of it from the, from the beginning, uh, nice and uh, kind of slowish. Uh, really making sure that you're, you're aware of where those chord changes are. So we got A minor, F. C, 2, 3, G, A minor, F, C, E, the verse starts, A minor, feeling my F through the C chord, A minor, guided F by beat and C, A minor, I can F where this C chord will end, A minor, but I F where to see Verse 2 A minor They tell me F is too C to understand A minor They say I'm F caught in a C A minor Well life will left me by and C can open up my eyes A minor Well that's F by C into the chorus, so wake me A minor when F is a C chord. G and A minor, F to C chord. E and A minor was F in my C and I G. A minor didn't F, I was C. E chord A minor to F. To C chord, G to A minus F to a C chord, E and A minor was F in my C and I G A minor did an F I was C. <laughs> And then we get into all of that house stuff. Um, really, really, it, it is a pretty mega tune, this one. Um, but now it's time to look at the strumming in a little bit more detail. And the strumming is kind of tricky, you know, it's not definitely not beginner strumming. All of this is really fast, though. The actual pattern itself is not difficult. And I'm going to explain it to you in eighth notes, okay? So I'm going to explain it to you kind of like the count is half the speed that it really is. We're not going to strum a chord, first of all, so we're going to wrap our fingers around the strings so you've got a nice muted sound. So the pattern would be this, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, down. You want to work quite a bit on that first of all, right? Getting that nice and automated. Down, down, miss, up, down, up, down, down, miss, up, down, up. 
Now I've just been explaining that like it's a whole bar, but the reality of it is it's actually half a bar. So you have this down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, one and two, E and a three and four, E and a one and two, E and a three and four, E and a. It's actually the proper count, okay? Doesn't really matter what way you want to count it, as long as you've got this down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Really, really recommend this muting the, the all of the strings to practice your rhythm to try and get that right before you start applying it to the chord sequence because straight away it's going to get a little bit sticky okay now i would recommend applying it first of all to the verse okay because it's just got the a minor f c okay half a bar of a minor half a bar of f and then a whole bar of c so i'll slow it right down now we'd have this down down up down up down down up down up down down up down up Now what's actually happening is the first down is just more the bass string. So it actually ends up kind of bass strings, full strum, up, down, up, bass strings, full, up, down, up, bass strings, full, up, down, up. Okay? So you really want to practice getting that in the pocket before you start looking at the intro and the chorus sequence, uh, which is the same thing, um, because it gets a little bit awkward because of this extra chord that's thrown in on beat four. Okay? So let's talk about that. So we've got this, it's essentially the same. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Okay, so all that happens is the end of that second bar of each one of those sequences becomes all down strums, one, like three and four and, all down strums, kind of bass string chord, bass string chord, kind of. Let me slow it right down for you. So the A minor, down, down, up, down, up, F, down, up, down, up to the C, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, G, G, A minor. Down, down, E. Again, A minor, F, C. Down, down, G. A minor, F, C. Down, down, E. A minor. does take a little bit of practice and I'm, I'm just noticing there's sometimes on the very last down strum I'm putting an up strum after it as well after that quick little chord change uh, it's not really intentional but it's just kind of happening when I'm following the pattern and starting to speed it up a little bit it's a really really interesting song this one to play you know because it's quite up tempo it's quite demanding you can play it simply as I said don't be afraid of just sticking with a, a different strumming pattern because it's really the strumming that makes this one a little tricky uh, and and when you're playing along with a full production like an original recording it can be equally as satisfying just to play really nice simple rhythms and be playing along with it than struggling and, and kind of falling behind um, 
And do remember that uh, another option is to slow the original track down a little bit as well. If you're using software like Transcribe, there's links all over my website for it in the transcribing section, uh, particularly you'll find a lot of links. Um, but importing an MP3 into that, you can actually slow the tempo down while it keeps the pitch the same. And that can be a really interesting trick if you're just struggling to be able to play the original one, you could knock it back to like 90% 90, 90 of the original speed and then play along like that and then gradually work yourself up to 100%. If you slow it to 50%, it tends to sound a little bit weird. So I'd probably don't recommend that but if you get it to like 75 percent still sounds kind of okay and that can be a good good way of training yourself to play because playing along with a metronome for this sort of stuff is generally a little bit boring a little soulless you know so playing along with the original recording and gradually speeding it up with that can be quite fun so uh i hope you enjoy playing this song and i'll see you for plenty more lessons and songs very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye